one of the questions we get asked a lot is about tweeters. And everybody's got a tweeter. If you got a pair of speakers, you got a tweeter. Mm -hmm. And there's soap domes and mm -hmm. metal domes and ultralight domes, inverted domes, mm -hmm. ribbons. I mean, the most common tweeter that I'm familiar with is a dome tweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would you yeah. agree yeah. with that? Yeah. So what's the... When people are looking at speakers, should they be paying attention to what kind of tweeter and why? Yeah, uh, you know, it's something where... I talked a little bit about this in a previous video, but um, tweeter dome material, you know, so dome tweeters, uh, the first soft dome tweeter I think was was Ken at Phase Tech patented it, but then, you know, there's the Allison tweeter and all that other stuff. It's been used for many years and it's, um, you know, the size and shape that it is for strength and also for directivity, so wide dispersion, high frequency. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the reason why it's not uh, larger or why it's not flat is because for stiffness and to have the optimum coverage. So stiffness, we're talking about the classic arch. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. people wonder, is it is it curved for dispersion? Does that disperse the sound out more? And it's, it's not, it's just to make it, it's a very stiff shape. Right. And, you know, some people have associated certain sound qualities with different dome materials. So historically, um, metal dome tweeters, you know, aluminum, titanium, etc., cetera, um, were known as, you know, typically sounding a little harsher maybe than a soft dome tweeter. Yeah. And, you know, just having different sound characteristics. But there's, there are, you know, really good and bad examples of, of each. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's hard to generalize, but I think, um, you know, soft dome tweeters were sort of, you know, the gold standard for many years. Uh, there was... You know, but, but now people are paying big bucks for, uh, uh, I call them Gucci tweeters. Oh, sure. Diamond encrusted, you know, oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, there, there's diamond, there's beryllium, there's... Um, I mean, is all that legit? Well, yeah, yeah. you know, it's something where the, the dome material does matter. The construction details also matter a lot because you, you know, above 10 kilohertz, it's not just the dome that's making the sound, you actually have the little surround edge element that, you know, that acts as a ring radiator, a high frequency. There's a lot of... Um, you know, just because the dome is super stiff doesn't mean you're going to get going to get great performance, and um, you know it does make a difference. Part of it is is a marketing one, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be different. Um, but I certainly uh, the material science aspect of tweeters has made a huge improvement in performance, and, and in the last you know 30 years, that's a or 40 years, a huge improvement. Um, you know, we I like. In the planar tweeter or the ribbon tweeters because you're not having to use exotic materials to get the performance you're, you're driving the diaphragm equally across its surface so you're using a simple polymer and aluminum diaphragm uh, so it's it, a lot it's a lot less weight a lot less mass yeah and so you don't have to make a super rigid structure because that's well, it's only one of the scandinavian companies doing something with one of the domes where they, it floats uh, if you drop it you remember that oh moment? yeah the aerogel stuff was, yeah, uh, yeah there's it was made it was so light that when yeah, you, uh, yeah. was it focal or yeah there, there were some folks doing stuff with um with aerogels which are the the lowest density solid that, that exists, but the problem is you have to put skins on them. Mm. Uh, so you can't just, you, or they, they had a, a cone with aerogel on the front. Actually, I think um, it was Audax in France that was doing that mm -hmm. at one point. Um, and yeah, th there's, um, you know, there's plasma tweeters, there's things that are essentially... Oh, the blue flame tweeters. <laughs> right. Oh, God, yeah. My first experience, blue flame tweeters, so, yeah. So tweeters are an area of innovation for the business, and, uh, you know, every designer or company has a favorite, mm -hmm. and there hasn't been one technology that's just absolutely dominated, but but domes, there's, there's um, you know, the most effort going into the it's the most common and so yeah. there's the most uh, exotic you know efforts going into into those um well and i think tweeters too not to belabor the point but i mean yeah. you, you and i both have the same opinion about a yeah. very famous british brand sure. that who whose defining characteristic is a tweeter that i find kind of a, a little aggressive and and i know that helps on the sales floor sure but once you get them home after a while it's like whoa 
Um, and, 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 and what's fascinating is of the however many thousands of dollars you pay, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's the tweeter that's defining this you know, thing. It's also, it grabs people's eye, you know, it's something that as a design element, you know, is, is um, the iconic thing about a lot of speakers. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of companies are defined by their tweeters. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you.